there's an advantage in being young because as a 20-something, life is more about potential than proof. Hi everyone, so this is a part 2 follow-up video from my previous video on why your 20s matter and how to make the most of it now by Mac J. So if you haven't already, you can watch that video first before jumping into this one. So being in my early 20s, I found that some of these tips have really helped me along my journey as I transition into adulthood, so I hope that you might find some of these tips useful as well. So building up on a point of young people having an identity crisis, what we should actually do instead is to try to build our identity capital. So what exactly is an identity capital? So at some point in our life, you have probably written a bio for your social media profile or read a famous author's bio in a book. Through these bios and short summaries, we describe how we perceive ourselves and how we want the world to perceive us. This links to identity capital, which is essentially a collection of your personal assets, and it defines you and is part of who you are. And these are the things that you know go beyond the things that you put in your resume, like your job title, your GPA, which university you came from, and it goes into things like the way we speak. So as Mac J says in the book, our identity capital is what we bring to the adult marketplace. It is the currency we use to metaphorically purchase jobs and relationships and other things that we want. So this kind of reminds me of something that I've learned in sociology, which is the five different forms of capital by Bourdieu. Bourdieu is a French sociologist, and in his famous article, The Forms of Capital, he actually describes how in our society, we actually have four different forms of capital. Economic, social, cultural, and symbolic. You can see our identity as different forms of capital, and essentially, as what Mac J has said, we can use them to negotiate our relationships and our jobs. So the takeaway that I have here is to invest in who you want to be in both your professional and your personal life. So for example, in your professional life, you can choose to attend courses, um, training and upskilling, and constantly keep up with changes in your industry. And this can be considered as building up your economic capital, which helps you to get better job prospects in the future and also be in a better position to negotiate for a promotion or a salary raise. Of course, there's also the soft skills that you can develop, which will have a positive impact in both your professional and your personal life, such as learning how to communicate effectively, learning how to do public speaking, and these are the things that will increase your confidence and also build your identity. Developing your hobby is also another way that you can build a strong identity and this is where you can you know, get creative and just go into the things that feels like play to you but might feel like work to others. Another learning that I have is to seek out weak ties and instead of only talking to your close friends every day, you should try to reach out to people that you don't know such as your alumni network or your friends of friends. Building up your network of weak ties can help you in terms of job opportunities because half of the new jobs are actually never posted. By reaching out to people who are not in your direct network, you can get access to new information that you can't get if you just stay within your current clique of friends. And this new information can help you to you know, potentially get a referral in a job that you want. Some might think that that is cheating, but it's essentially the signs of how information spreads. It's said that the world is so connected that we're only separated by 6 degrees of separation and I don't know how accurate that number might be, especially you know with social media um, but essentially what I want to say is that every opportunity that we have or the people that we want to reach out to are actually closer to us than we think. If you'd like to learn more about how you can find mentors and peers in your life, you can check out my article in the description box below. So the next takeaway that I have is about being intentional with our relationships and focus on it as much as we focus on our work. Intentional with our relationships means that we are not treating love as a game or something to just kill time. You have an active choice in picking your family and who you want to be with and it's not just about trying to make things work with someone and you know just sticking around because that person is choosing you but as much as the person is choosing you, you are also choosing them. And it's important, I think, at the start of your relationship to clearly define the non-negotiables and the red flags in your relationship because it is very easy to get blindsided by all these red flags when you are in love and when you are, you know, filled with oxytocins and, and endorphins because love is essentially like a drug. The topic of relationships, you can check out the book The 7 Principles for Making Marriages Work by John Gottman.
last takeaway that I have to sum up this video would be to create your own narrative. There's an advantage in being young because as a 20-something, life is more about potential than proof. And as Mac J says, those who can tell a good story about who they are and what they want, leap over those who can't. Life is about telling your own story and distinctiveness is a core part of our identity. So the next time you're on an interview or doing one of those tell me about yourself kind of sessions, be proud of who you are and don't be afraid to just share about your experiences and how you're different from your peers or those who are going to be interviewed. So you could be talking about the CCA or the clubs that you're joining or even talking about the passion project and the hobbies that you love. This will also tell the interviewer how holistic you are as a person and also that you have different skill sets that can be transferable into your role. So 30 is not the new 20 and you're deciding your life right now. Get some identity capital, seek out weak ties, be intentional about your relationships and form your own narrative. That's a wrap for this video and if you've enjoyed it, do remember to hit the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. My name is Tess and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!